and uh, what it is is regarding the charity challenge uh, 2011 that I hope everybody knows about, that you've been informed by your kind dean about. And I wanted to just have a quick brief and give everybody a little bit of history on why we raise money for the charity challenge and why it's so important in us and our everyday uh, lives as, as Khudam as well. Have you got control? Yeah, please. Okay. Next one, please. Wait. Okay, the MK Charity Challenge. When did it start and who started it? Uh, the MK Charity Challenge originally was set up by Hazrat Khalifa Rabi Rahmullah in, in the 80s, just over 20 years ago actually. And uh, the reason why Hazur then uh, set up the Charity Challenge was twofold. One was to educate Khudam in liaising and dealing with the local communities and getting Khudam a bit more out there in the public eye. Secondly, of course, uh, one of the main things was to physically educate uh, Khudam as well, which is a big part of our faith. Later on, the Charity Challenge actually developed a lot more than its origins and we started raising money for a lot of the charities and a lot of the charities that you can see up there. Our first charity actually that we started raising money for was uh, Save the Children uh, and we've got a relationship which goes back almost 15 years with Save the Children. Um, there isn't a picture there at the moment but we've got a really nice archive picture of uh, one of our uh, famous former khadims, uh, Lord B.D. Sub with uh, Princess Anne who's the patron of Save the Children. And, um, since then, um, under the chairman of, uh, pre, of our present Sadasab, the charity challenge really took off. Now, we started going from humble beginnings of originally raising money, 15, 20,000 pounds for charity, and really getting our name out there, to then suddenly, bang, we started raising over 100,000 pounds for charity. If you don't know already, you should know what the charities are that we're supporting. There's about 10 charities and I think there's a presentation here as well as to what we're supporting. You have to understand and appreciate where the money is going as well. There's cancer charities, there's charities uh, predominantly for, the, uh, for children. So understand where, the, where this money is going. There's, there's people out there who have cancer burning them up inside. This is where the money is going. There's, there's children out there who are suffering from malnutrition. They don't have day-to-day uh, -day bread. They don't even have water, clean water access to this. This is where the money's going. There's children who are suffering abuse, physical abuse, from, you know, people older than them. This is where the money is going. This is who we are helping ultimately, right? So we are very fortunate, we're very comfortable to have everything, have our, you know, our, the roof over our heads, the food we eat, we're very fortunate. It's Allah's blessing that we're very fortunate, but there's people out there who aren't so lucky. So this is the money, the money, the hundreds of thousands that we raise, this is, that money is going to, to help them to better their lives. So you need to appreciate what you're raising money for, so you can then, in turn, ask that, instead of giving me five pounds, give me 50 pounds. Because the money's not going to me, this, is, this money's going to some poor young child who doesn't, who doesn't know if he's going to see tomorrow. So take this on board, fully appreciate this, and then you'll be able to collect much more than you, than you generally collect. The, the figure, as explained by Fuxab, is very high. We haven't achieved that before, but it is achievable. And it's only achievable if everybody fully gets on board and takes part. And, and you don't ask of each other, you don't ask the person next to you, give me five pounds, and he's going to ask you the same question. That's, there's no point. Right? You ask the people, your neighbours, your, your, your colleagues outside of Jamal, because Alhamdulillah, unfortunately, we live in a country in the UK, when it comes to charity and donations, they would readily give. They may not necessarily believe in the existence of God or anything like this, that's a different debate and conversation. Right? But when it comes to charity and helping fellow uh, humans and, and bettering their lives, general public, they would definitely give. You can see this when you see Things like comic relief, uh, you know, all these fundraising uh, things that they do on the TV, they raise millions and millions of pounds because the, the British public gives. So don't be afraid to ask. Right? It is very easy to do. All you're doing is asking and they will give. Right? But you all have to ask. That's the main thing. And, I need, and you all need to take part.
We'll now start the closing session um, of the uh, Back to the Region Ishtamal with the Lavad. I'd like to request Pastor Bajwa Saab for the Lavad in translation.
take time out to listen to Rasul's address. If you don't understand it the first time, listen to it again. It's very important. <coughs> Rasul highlighted so many other things within the address in terms of what we are as, as, as a khadim, what, you know, the things that we should be doing in terms of service to Jamaat. And this is in a country, and you have to understand and put things into perspective, we're living in a country where we have the free civil, civil liberties to do what we're doing today, to hold Islamas, to go out and preach. You know that in places like Pakistan and India, most of you I'm sure saw the YouTube videos regarding Indonesia, and these are outlawed, right? But even still, despite that, out of their own choice, they're going out and, and holding Islamas and preaching, they're, they're, they're trying to live up to the name of being an Ahmadi and they're doing that and they're doing more than that. Right? This is in a country where they, you know, they, they don't know if, if they go to Maghrib Namaz, they don't know if they're going to come home from that alive. Right? This is the situation that's happening in those parts of the world where literally the, their lives are at stake but still they choose to go out and um, fulfill the obligations that are uh, both, you know, that they are due to them as an Ahmadi. Now, we're living in a country of free choice, right? Are we content with just simply listening to MTA, knowing of the abuse that our brothers across the world are facing? Are we happy just to sit at home, you know, turn up to half a day of Ishtamar and, and that's it? 